What's going on guys? Jake here from The Fly Fiend. Welcome back to the fly tying tutorial. I've had some requests to tie up some more soft hackle swinging flies. So today we're going to be tying up a new fly I've been tying. It's a swinging holy grail. It's just a larger profile fly than the original holy grail caddis emerger. So I'm going to get a fresh hook in the vise and we'll get right into this tutorial. So the hook I'm tying this fly on is a fire hole 718. This is a size 10 and I have that paired up with a 532nd um, gold brass bead. When I'm tying soft tackles, I like to use brass uh, mainly because I can just change out my poly leaders if I want to go deeper. And with um, soft tackles, I want them to kind of flutter in the water. And if I tied this with tungsten, um, it would just sink very fast and not have that kind of uh, natural um, buoyancy when it's coming back up when I'm finishing my swing. The thread we're going to be using is UTC 70 denier. This is light olive. And with all kind of holy grail um, patterns, you want to start your thread about midpoint because you don't want to crowd this eye because you're going to be pushing this bead back. So I like to start about, about a quarter. I'm just going to dress my hook there, cut out my tag end. And the first material we're tying in is some Hungarian partridge. This is dyed olive, and I'm going to be grabbing this feather. I'm going to try to grab a very small one right from its shoulder. I'm just going to strip all the fuzzy stuff off it. And this is just kind of imitating um, legs coming out of the um, caddis. So I'm just going to cut a little triangle on that, little anchor point. I'm just gonna make some nice tight wraps to make sure that's in there nice and secure. I'm gonna grab my hackle pliers Grab this stem, I'm going to pull it up to vertical, just like so. I'm just going to grab my index and my thumb and kind of just pull these fibers back, just like so. So when I wrap this in, they want to face rearward. You can take your time with this, kind of just making sure that None of these fibers bunch up. So I'm just gonna come under that stem with my thread, capture that, then I can take off my hackle pliers. And what I like to do is actually back wrap over that whole stem. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna make it extremely durable when fish grab it, it's not going to break out on me and unravel. Just like so. So the next material we're tying in is our rib. And for that, we're just gonna be using some flexi floss, um, span flex, it has a bunch of different names. This is going to be in a light olive color as well. I'm going to tie this on the side of the shank facing towards me. I'm going to take one wrap there. I'm going to pull on this pretty tight. I'm just going to take wraps down the shank. It's going to keep the shank Nice and thin, it's not gonna bulk it up. I can bring that back up and finish securing in the rest of that. I pull that really tight, cut that out, and it'll just suck right down into the thread. You don't have to worry about a little tag end or anything like that. So I'm just gonna bring this down. So 
just like so. Kind of clean that up just a bit. Now for the actual body, we're going to be using some Vivas Body Quill. This particular one is a olive color. This is the uh, BQ5. So what I like to do, you can put this on a bodkin if you want, or a bobbin if you want. What I like to do is just take it off with my hand. And I pull off a pretty good, probably about a foot, a foot and a half. And I'm gonna double it over at once. And if I, if I was tying a smaller fly, I would just double it over once. But with this fly, it's, it's a kind of a bigger profile and it has like a bigger body. So I'm gonna double it over twice. So I'll have four strands. And it's just gonna cover more surface area quicker and it's just gonna add a little bit more um, bulk to it because it is a, a pretty thin material. So I'm just gonna tie that in right where I ended my thread wraps. I'm just gonna tie that in all the way back down. Then I'm gonna bring my thread back up. And I'm just gonna build up a little body here, making sure that all my materials are covered. This has a nice little taper into it. Just like so. Now I'm gonna grab my Vivas body quilt. As you can see there, I got four strands. I'm gonna pull pretty tight on them. I'm just gonna make wraps up this body and I'm actually overlapping about half on top of each other all the way up. Once you get to the front, you can kind of build a taper with it. If you want a little bit more bulk here. Now I'm going to come underneath with my tying thread. Capture that nice and tight. You don't want that going anywhere. Just like so. I come with my scissors. cut out that Vivas body quill. Now I'm, going to go, now I'm going to grab my span flex here. And I'm just going to make open spiral wraps up the body. And capture it off nice and tight. Now what I'm gonna do is actually just pull on this ribbing material. And once I cut it, it just sucks it right back in. So you don't have to worry about any tag pieces coming, sticking out. So at this point, I'm going to cover the body. I'm just gonna be using some Loon Outdoors fluorescing flow. This is actually gonna add a little bit of shine into the fly as well. It's just going to add a lot of durability to that since it is a rubber ribbing. I'm just going to hit that with my light. Cure that for about 10 seconds. Now the next material we're going to be tying in is the antennas. And for that, I'm just going to be using some mallard flank. Uh, this is just a uh, dyed wood duck color. I think it just matches with the, uh, the olive pretty nice. I'm just going to take two fibers off the stem. These are kind of tricky to tie in. Try to tie them in the whole length of the fly at this point. So you can actually use your nail to kind of 
pull them apart a bit, display them away just like that. I can come in with my scissors and just cut out the little excess I have there. And I'm constantly pushing this bead up to see how much room I have because I am going to be tying in a soft hackle in front of that bead. So just kind of pushing it back to see how much I have periodically is going to um, just kind of give me a guideline. So right now, I'm going to tie in the thorax portion. And we're just going to make a little dubbing loop here. And these tend to stay pretty high. But a little trick you can do is get your scissors, just put them underneath here, and just kind of pull on them just like that, and you'll just get the curve. And they'll just lay back. Once you start fishing it, it'll lay down um, nice, but once it's in the vise, um, it's going to stick up a bit. So I just made a little dubbing loop here, it's probably about two inches. And all I'm going to be putting in this is just some Hairs Ice Dub. This is black. This is going to be a very sparse um, noodle. So I'm gonna get this kind of oriented on my, in my hands and once I put in the loop, I'll show you. It's probably about an inch of material and it's very sparse. So as you can see there, it's about an inch. I'm gonna spin that up nice and tight gonna grab my scissors here and kind of just make sure all these fibers are pulled out it's like that and I do recommend using this uh, hair ice dub rather than this regular ice dub you're gonna get a lot more uh, guard hair and uh, this is gonna add a lot more bugginess to the overall fly that little bit of hairs here in there So I'm just going to wrap that in. I'm going to come under that with my lead thread. Just like so. Come with my scissors and cut out that loop. And if you don't have a dubbing, dubbing loop tool, you could just lightly um, dub this on, spin it in, then just kind of pick it out. Um, just the uh, the dubbing loop is just a lot more um, secure. So once I have that all tied down nice, I'm going to throw in a little whip finish here. Cut out my thread. Then I'm actually going to push this bead back. Then I'm going to start my thread again in front of that bead. Kind of just push that back nice. So ideally you probably want about a, a half a hook's eye. Um, if you're kind of new to tying, um, I would kind of leave a little bit more just so you have a little bit more room to tie in your soft tackle part. Um, but for the most part, I would say um, about a, a half a hook's eye behind the, uh, or in front of the bead. So we're gonna be tying in our second soft tackle and it's gonna be from the same um, Hungarian partridge. And we're gonna grab about the same area, the shoulder, shoulder area. And I want these fibers to be a little bit longer than the rear ones. I want these to kinda start to blend with the uh, second ones once they're in. 
So I'm just gonna prep this feather exactly the same way as I did the other one. Strip the bottom fluffy part off. It's like that, kind of pull back on these fibers, exposing the tip a bit. Get my scissors, cut the tip to a little point there. Then I'll be able to capture that with my thread and tie it in nice and tight. If I get this there. So now I can grab my half pliers again. Put that right on the stem. Lift up to vertical. Gently pull back. You don't want to pull too hard up or you're going to pull the, uh, the feather right out of your thread wraps. So you just kind of pull it up, moderate tension. And you're just going to tie this in. Making sure that none of those are trapped. Come over that stem with your thread. Then you can cut out your stem nice and close. Then you can just kind of grab these fibers, pull them rearward. And then you can clean up this head. And the same with, with the back, I like to back wrap over the stem, uh, mainly because you don't want that getting pulled out. It's just gonna add like so much more durability to your fly. So I'm just gonna throw a five turn whip finish in there. Make sure that's nice and tight. I can cut out my thread. Now I'm just going to grab a little bit of that same Loon Outdoors fluorescing flow. I'm just going to put a little dab right on that head. It's going to make a nice little shiny neat head as well as protect those wraps even more from the fish. So once that's cured, you have a pretty rock hard fly you can fish. I'll um, primarily been be fishing this for steelhead and salmon. I'm swinging it. A lot of our waters right now are low and clear, so I'm, uh, I'm taking a smaller, more finesse approach to it. So that's why I kind of been tying up these smaller, or these, Bigger holy grails from, for resident trout, but smaller for um, steelhead. So once that's nice and cure, you got a nice bomb proof fly. You can also tie this in smaller for resident fish. You can even fish this for resident fish. It's pretty big um, for a resident fish, but I mean, if you have some big browns or big rainbows, um, you can definitely fish this. So hope you liked today's tutorial, guys. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment um, if you have any questions about the fly or any of the materials or anything like that. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. Thanks a lot again for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.